Ah! I don't even want to do this. <laughs> all right, all right, I, I guess I'll stop joking. All right, I, I don't have a problem going ahead and solving a problem like this for you. Um, but the main important thing I want you to look at is, you know, when you guys look at it simplifying our trigonometric expressions, obviously we cannot apply our um, properties of exponents because, you know, these are all separated by addition and subtraction. So we want to look into factoring. And, you know, when looking at factoring, we like when we have these good old trinomials, I can say, all right, what two numbers multiply to give me 15, they're going to add to give me negative eight. Um, you know, you just keep on working through and you're like, all right, I got it in my head, I'll figure this one out. But then we get to one of these larger ones and you say, well, what do I do with a term like that? Well, when we have four terms, that's going to be a special factoring technique um, that we're going to want to ap apply. Yeah, so to do a problem like this, um, what we want to do is imply the grouping technique. And if you remember the grouping technique, the way that it works is if we have our four terms, we're going to break up the first two terms and then the last two terms. Then what we're going to want to do is factor out each one of these terms by um, our, their greatest common factor. So if I look at x cubed minus 5x squared, I can see I can factor out an x squared. By doing that, I'm left with an x minus 5. Up top, for negative 3x plus 15, what I want to do is factor out, again, another common term so I can factor out a negative 3. And I'm left with an x minus 5. And the important thing when factoring by grouping is that you want to make sure you factor out the same, um, the same enough factors so therefore you have your common factors out here that you can factor out again. So here, you can see that in each bond, out of each of these two terms, right? because now they're separated by subtraction, you can see the only thing they have in common is an x minus 5. So when I factor on x minus 5, I'm just left with an x squared minus 3. So now I'm going to rewrite my expression to have x minus 5 times an x squared minus 3. OK, and then what we do is we go and factor this. Well, x squared minus 8x plus 15. You guys might be thinking at this and say, all right, well, what two numbers multiply to give me 15? Um, what type of numbers multiply to give me 15, but uh, add to give me negative 8? Well, that can be hopefully uh, negative 5 times x minus 3. So therefore, I can say this is x uh, minus 5 times x minus 3. Well, therefore, my x minus 5 divides into my x minus 5. Um, however, we look at this, and a lot of you might say, oh, well, why can't the 3's cancel out or the x's and just be left with x at the end? Um, this is x squared minus 3, and that's uh, x, x minus 3. They, these are not same terms. They're separated by subtraction, so you can't divide one into the other but not into both. Um, and unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is just going to be our simplified answer for this expression. We cannot simplify this any further. So that will be our uh, final expression. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you simplify a, uh, that is how you simplify a uh, rational expression. Thanks.